Would you like to watch the collapse of American democracy in real time? Come with us. <laughs> We're here in Washington, D.C., where protesters have just stormed the U.S. Capitol. To be honest, with perfect hindsight, I definitely would not have made that video in such a nonchalant way. But at the time, we had no idea we were in the middle of a domestic terrorist attack. When Walter asked me last week if I wanted to go with him to the Stop the Steal rally, I was a little hesitant and kind of nervous. There was a lot of ramp up on social media and it seemed like it could get dangerous or pretty serious. We do comedy, but you know, I make so many videos about this strain of America, about this type of Americanism, about these type of Trump supporters, but I never really see them up close. And so I decided to go. I don't think either of us could have anticipated how the day ended up going, but we were there, disguised as reporters, interviewing people, trying to document the day's events, try and mess around with people, play like Sasha Baron Cohen. Walter and I are also in the position that being blonde haired, blue eyed men, we blent in. While we were undercover, quite literally, no one suspected us. And so from beginning to end, here's the story of one of the craziest days of my life. We've been up, been driving since 4 a.m. It's wild. <laughs> we are, where Where are we right now? What state we're are we? are like right outside of Philadelphia. Same we're right outside of Philadelphia. We, we've got some Trump flags. We've got quite a lot of people in Trump hats. We just stopped for coffee for a moment. Yeah. And already have been asked if we support Mr. Donald Trump. Yeah, and so I gotta I gotta get you the Trump hat. I gotta give you, I brought a Trump <laughs> hat for you. We're, we're, we're gonna be full imposters today. Yeah, Um. so basically the deal is this. We got to get in and get out, okay? Trump, uh, Trump speaks at two o'clock, and then shortly after, Pence uh, certifies, you know, the elect the electorate, and um, we got to get out of there right after that. I've been to DC rallies before, the DC Trump rallies. You have to be gone by sundown. Basically, as long as we stay on the main strips where it's populated, we'll be okay. If you go on the side streets, it gets really sketchy really quickly. People really like once got into it with me, they thought I was Antifa. I had to like pull my shirt down and be like, no, no, no look. And I, I had like a Blue Lives Matter shirt underneath. I had like took my Trump hat off because I was like, I'm not, I'm just going home. And you know, like it gets sketch. We want to stay the hell away from any of the Proud Boys. You can sort of recognize the Proud Boys. They're gonna, they're, they look like they're gonna go paintballing. It's like a paintball riot and gear, and it's, they're, I mean, they're terrifying. There's, I mean, there's no two ways about it. They came for violence. They roll in large packs. You know, I mean, Trump supporters are, you know, there's a family, there's a this, there's a guy, the Proud Boys. Every time I see him, I get a freaking panic attack. So you don't wanna get into it with them. We're not gonna interview them. Basically, I don't, I don't scare easily. If you see me get scared and I'm like, let's go, then it's like, all right, definitely run, but don't stop filming. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a crazy day. Yeah, look at these guys. Already, already, all sorts of Trump supporters out here. We're seeing Trump and America okay, flags. So right here, look at these guys right here. Oh yeah, they've got a, a big Trump banner right here. We are literally hours away and people are already breaking the <laughs> out. He's getting his disguise on. Okay, so I'm gonna wear a mask underneath the mask. Okay. <laughs> Just for a little extra protection, because this very well may be a super spreader kind I of thing. You should wear this. Oh god. Here, this is your mask. Oh my god, the America mask. I might take this America beanie too, because this Trump 2020 hat, hard to stomach. I might wear it behind backwards so dude, I don't dude, have to dude, be too dude, heavy. Dude, I'm not I'm not fucking with you. You're, you gotta blend in. I'm absolutely not kidding. You need to have an identifier. They, they, they won't trust you unless there's a visual, like there's something visual. What do we think, folks? Do we, do we trust that this is a Trump supporter? There is an imposter among us. I mean, you, you could also wear this. If yeah, you... the, the America hat might be my move, but we'll see. We'll keep. Well, I'll bring them both in my backpack, so we've got yeah. them prepped. All right, and then um, we've got <laughs> Fox News. <laughs> Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> CNN. We're ready to. Um, we're ready. I work. I don't know if we're committing crimes doing this, but you know, like we're. Also, are you insinuating that I don't work for all three of these companies simultaneously? I, I am at I least like a little bit insinuating like... that. He's got a cape. So yeah, um, the cape really ties it together. Nothing screams winner like a Trump cape. Like a Trump 2020 cape. Today yeah. Biden will be. <laughs> 
confirmed as our president yeah. in the day that the Georgia runoffs went blue. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the first thing you notice at these rallies is how many people show up. And we're talking people decked in merch, proud to be with their people. God bless Patriots. So Mr. Rudy Giuliani walking along towards the crowd. Legal genius. People showed up from all over the country and the world. We're talking families, small business owners, even the Westboro Baptist Church. All people who believe they were serving God or their patriotic duty. We have to do something. I don't want to stay at home. We have to do something. We have to show our patriotism. Thank you. Your pride is going to take you to hell just like the homos. Just like the, the filthy homos and sodomites. The whole place was a hotbed of conspiracy, propaganda, and hopes for the death of the CCP. All under the guise of making America great again. You know, what's happened last night with the the, uh, the loss of the Senate, basically, uh, I think people are really uh, are really uh, gonna want to see something happen here with this. I really cannot stress enough how many people showed up. We're talking tens of thousands. Are you, are you ever gonna come down to the tree? You know, if Biden, Biden gets elected. <laughs> The only way I'm coming down from the street is if, if we start a revolution. That's how I feel right now. Yeah. All right, then get in the left and get out of here with that. Yeah, you know, I just, I want you, you know, I just don't want you to get hurt. Biden getting elected is worse than me falling from the street, trust me. Stop the steal. Stop the steal, yes. Stop the steal. What we want, what I want is defund Supreme Court. Oh, wait, defund here. FBI! Yeah, wait, wait. Defund Justice Department! <laughs> defund all the rhinos! Unless they're blind, they know this election was stolen. They must be blind and stupid. McConnell should be... I don't know why McDonald should... Just, he should retire and go to hell! That's what I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. That's what Pelosi have intended for 20 years. Steal the election for American people. Yeah. And now the 75 million victims. That's what we have. So what do you, what do you think about um, Nancy Pelosi, Soros, um, and how they uh, designed the banking system in Animal Crossing? <laughs> Don't get me started on those things. <laughs> all right? Look, all I know is that they're all traitors. Every last one of them are traded. I don't even know what happened to Amy Coney Barrett. I have no idea what happened to her. I mean, I mean, she's a what? A baby swamp? Is that what she represents? The baby swamp? Right away she turned into a swamp creature, right? Is that what it is? I mean, that's why I say defund the uh, Supreme Court. There's nothing we can do. Defund the Supreme Court. Defund the Supreme Court, right? Defund the Supreme Court. That's the answer to the question. Defund the Supreme Court. What does it say? Lumbies from North Carolina, we're the Lumbee tribe from North Carolina, and we've been trying to get federally recognized, and it went through everything, and Pelosi turned it down. So you're, so you're First Nations, Native American tribe, uh, in full support of Trump? Yes, we are. Oh we change, our county is the biggest county in North Carolina, Robinson County, and we're all Native Americans, and it used to be Democrat, but this year it went all red. And he actually made a trip to um, Robinson County, and he said to himself, he said, I will get you guys federally recognized. Okay. So we're excited about that. Even though Pelosi knocked it down right now, we're still hopeful. And as many of us that can come up here from North Carolina to support him, that's what we're going to do. Fantastic. Um how has COVID um, affected your tribe at all? Well, our numbers in North Carolina are high. And the reason they're high is because North Carolina lumpy people, um, to get food, box food, they have to get in a line in their cars and get tested for COVID before they can get food. So that's making our COVID numbers go up in our state because more people need food. Thank and, you. Uh, a lot of people around there don't have you know they're not they don't have a lot of jobs there so there's a lot of people that have to go in those lines and get food so a, a medicare for all plan that wouldn't help your tribe at all it would so a medicare for all would actually help you would help our tribe yes it would and if we became federally recognized we would have that we don't really want a casino which that's what they think we want but we don't 
We just want what is available for the Native Americans under the Act, the Native American Act. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we're, we're here not for Trump, for myself. I'm here for my family. I'm here for our nation. Um, I'm a guy who came from Cuba, okay? And so you know all about communism. I know everything about communism. And I think that the mistake that the Democrats have made is not taking the guns before they try to pull this one off. I think they screwed up. So they should have taken uh, our they guns first. They should have picked up the guns first like they did in Cuba and in Venezuela. They didn't do that. And it's not going to work out like they're thinking it's going to work out. And people like me, I mean, we're doing everything by the book right now. We're trying to follow the law. We're doing the court thing. We're doing everything. But once that ends, if this is if this is not corrected and goes the way that it should be because they stole this election or they're trying to, the next thing is not going to be happy or fun. It's over. The GOP is dead. You could feel in the air that people were a little on edge. They wanted to see this election overturned. They had a game plan to follow the legal path, and if that didn't work out, then they would take whatever means necessary. So uh, what, are, what are we doing here today? Fight for the Constitution, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of living in a society where we don't have to be under communist rule or socialism. We're here to fight for God, love of our country, having our history being told and taught in schools. We need our rights back. We need to fight against the damn Democrats, demon rats. Go Trump! Yeah. 2020! Yeah. So what, what, are we, what are we doing here today? Uh, I'm making a stand with the rest of the Patriots here to say, hey, this is the end of the Republic as we know it. For all these weak need politicians as opposed to leaders that we have. Amen. The 2020 election was stolen. We all know it. They know it. They won't even look at the evidence. They'll say there's no evidence. Even people I used to respect as a Republican senator, such as Tim Scott, Lindsey Graham, those guys, they sold out the party to the country. We deplorables, we chumps, we get it. We're not fools. We see things, and we're making a stand. This is the republic. It lives or dies today. For what was a surprisingly diverse group, there was one common thread between everyone. They honestly believed it was their patriotic duty to be there. A lot of people are saying the liberal media's calling our side, you know, a bunch of domestic terrorists. And it's like, we're not all domestic terrorists. It's like... There's probably, there's definitely some domestic terrorists right in our own government making a fraudulent election right now. We all know Donald Trump won the election. The American people are not stupid, as you guys think we are on the news networks. Half of those people should be run for treason for the fear mongering and all that they do to get their way and pout. They're like babies. Take babies. They need to be put over Donald Trump's knee and given a big spanking. No, CNN, fake news. They're the worst. What do, you, what do you think about Fox News? Fox News was bought out by Democratic le leaders. So, I mean, they're just as bad as the rest. It's the swamp. All of them. Drain the swamp! Drain the swamp! How many people would you say are in this, in this field right here, if you had a guesstimate? I've been at the last two rallies. And so this is the most populated by far. So I was at the, the Stop the Steel rally, the Million MAGA March, and I was at the second one. So this is more than those two com combined. The one that was weird to me, I heard, sounds like Donald Trump's coming on right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. so, I, I have a message. I'm here from South Africa. Okay, here. Yeah. yeah, they say that all eyes um, are on Congress today. I'm here in person, standing right in front of the Washington Monument, and I want you to zoom in on my face. And I want to tell you, I have a message for every one of you senators and every one of you congressmen out there. We watching. We've had enough, okay? We have had enough. The lamb is going to become the lion of Judah. We have had enough. Don't tell us what to do anymore. I don't take instruction too well, in case you haven't noticed. There's a lot of pissed off people out here, not just from South Africa, not just from America. Israelis, Chinese, there's a section out there where there's just a ton of Chinese folks. Xi Jinping, we ain't scared of you, mate. Bring it. 
But we've had enough. The Lindsey Grahams, John Thune, Mitt Romney, all you bunch of rhino assholes. We're watching you today. We're watching you. You got that? Now, if you're gonna try and tell me that that level of anger and entitlement isn't toxic and embedded into the fabric of the American system, then you are fooling yourself. They're made to believe that they're victims and they go on the offensive against everyone else and that they deserve some greater justice. It wasn't just anger. We ran into a fair share of conspiracy theorists as well, who I don't wanna give a full platform, but I think important to hear little snippets of so you understand what kind of ideas are floating around at these rallies. Yeah. Where, where are you coming from right now? Um, I'm staying right now in DC, um, I've, my, you know, my hotel, but I came from El Paso, Texas. The city of El Paso entered into this really weird uh, agreement with the Rockefeller Foundation. So the Rockefeller Foundation through this resilient so, so what do you think is the Rockefeller Foundation's plan for America? Well, um, certainly forced vaccinations. Uh, this is going to be monumental. It's going to be biblical today. So things are coming out today that's going to rock the world. And so, and so also you're mentioning, um, tell me about the corrupt police unions that are you know, blocking police reform. Well, it's actually the whole union concept. And the, the police being unionized causes a situation to where the bad, the bad cops can't be outed. And there's we, we have millions of, of instances, but we have hundreds and thousands of B-roll footage instances where police officers have acted unconstitutionally and stomped on the rights of the people. Okay, I do actually agree with that bit. So you're a Trump supporter. And you support Black Lives Matter? I am a reporter, and I'm not here to support. However, I do support the Trump movement. I do support this current administration and what they're doing. And there's, you know, Trump does and says some things that I don't agree with, but he probably say some things I don't agree with too, and vice versa. <laughs> So at this point, Trump's been speaking for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and we had been doing interviews all morning, and so we decided to go get a cup of coffee. Walter, after a, a couple hours of interviews, how are you feeling? It's like, a, I'm in a, it's like an alternate universe. It's like a, we've been in an alternate universe. Nothing is real anymore. It's just like a very strange place with strange people. Some people are really nice. Some people are nice until they open their mouths, and then they're like, oh my god, you're crazy. As we were making our way back towards the crowd, Trump finished speaking, and we started to see people stream towards what we now know was the direction of the Capitol. We had heard bits and pieces of his speech, we had heard the calls for Mike Pence to do the right thing, and we also heard Trump say things like this. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. And now, in hindsight, we also know Trump said things like this. We're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol. And we're going to try and give... You know, the Democrats are hopeless. They're never voting for anything. Not even one vote. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're going to try and give them the kind of pride, boldness that they need to take back our country. At that time, though, we had no idea what was about to happen. So we continued interviewing people. You're a congressman or senator, you're going to say, oh, I'm out of a job, and I better not say the B word. I better say the D word and start supporting Donald Trump. No B word, which is Biden. Ah! Makes me cringe. And the T word is where we're going. And he's gonna win. And even if he doesn't, we need him to know we will not serve other tyrants like the B word. Uh, so tell me about Q. All right, well, what I know about Q is uh, military intelligence. It's a uh, plan to take down the cabal, to take down corruption from all around the world. Uh, it's in charge by the military and it's working hand to hand with Trump. Uh, we, the Anons, are basically digital soldiers who investigate the research. Um, we actually help the community in whatever ways we can. Based on Walter's previous experience at rallies, we decided to use the OAN marker. 
and it was pretty easy to see why. Within minutes of us donning the disguise, there were people tripping over themselves to give us a quote, or to take a photo with Walter and I, or to ask about an internship for their daughter. Literally hundreds of people throughout the day came up to us and thanked us for being the only real news around. As we walked through the crowd, we would hear shouts of, OAN, no way, that's amazing, you guys are the best. Immediately, we were treated like celebrities. And what was especially difficult for me to grapple with was, we would have conversations with these people and they would seem entirely normal. There was a woman who could not stop asking if Walter and I had studied journalism in college because her daughter was studying journalism and she was so worried about it. But then, as soon as you start talking about politics, it shifted into a totally different world. The level of hate, the level of vitriol, the level of entitlement that would come from these people's mouths, or the level of pure disillusionment with the reality of the world. It felt like we had stepped into an entirely different universe. So, <laughs> so dude, at the end of the day, I figure we don't go as OEN anymore. I figure we go as CNN right now. We're about to leave. Why not just be CNN? I'm totally getting into a fight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not. This is so I'm not, not. not. Fake news? I'm sorry, I can't hear you over all this Soros money. Ah. Oh. So we had the CNN marker on for about 30 okay, seconds. I had it on for 30 seconds. Before people someone wanted, yelled at us uh, and fight. called us fake news. So we're gonna switch over to Fox. We're gonna switch over to Fox News. People hate Fox News here, but like, I don't think they wanna fight us the same way. Like that, it was like an instant like fist fight. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. We really thought our day was over. Trump had finished speaking, but then we started to realize something was going on. We were seeing sirens. I got a text from my mom saying that the Capitol had been broken into. And so we decided to stick around for a little longer to go see what was happening. So right now, uh, people, protesters have stormed the Capitol. It's getting really sketchy here. It's not okay. And um, we're gonna stick around for a little bit more, but then we've really gotta get out of here. This is also about the time that my camera died. And so the rest of the footage from the day is an assortment of shots from my and Walter's iPhones, as well as many, many MAGA supporters who thrust their footage upon us when they learned that we were OAN. Would you like to watch the collapse of American democracy in real time? Come with us. <laughs> we're here in Washington, DC, where protesters have just stormed the US Capitol. And so we arrive at this fateful video where we really still hadn't grasped the full scope of the situation and commenced one of the craziest hours of my life. What we now know was happening at this time was people had broken into the Capitol building. And thanks to people at the scene who gleefully showed us the videos they had taken while people broke into the Capitol and were so excited to be able to give OAN their footage, we have some video that can fill in the gaps that we missed. Meanwhile, senators are being evacuated to the inner chamber. People are barricading themselves in their offices, fearing for their lives. And the crowd is hit with pepper spray, rubber bullets, and even a real bullet is fired. I got up, I broke through. DC police sprayed me, maced me, beat me in the head with batons, kicked me in the side of the head, and beat me on the back with the batons. Look at his eyes. That's what the DC police is willing to do to the American people. I have to support these son of a bitches. The DC police work for the mayor. The mayor is a deep state Democrat on the payroll of communist China. And then they spray you in the eyes eventually. And they taste. And they hit the, they either they hit you with bars and helmets and Did they hit you in the head with something? Oh I'm sure, yeah. It was it was so much adrenaline, I'm gonna feel it tomorrow. What happened? Oh my gosh. We're we're trying you got to break red through though. Marks on the side of your head there. Oh Did yeah, they I'm hit sure. You? They 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 beat us. Well thank you for going up there because because you broke through all those other people have hit me up there. So it well, takes maybe some of our uh, Congress people will get some balls. Do you have some to spare? Uh, <laughs> uh, I just do what I can for everybody here. Everybody's here fighting for the same thing. Freedom. Yep. This country. You know? Yep. It, 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 Trump's the one fight for us. I mean, he's been fighting for three and a half years. At least I can spend a couple of hours or a day to come here and fight. And yep. I mean, it's been There's filling out the belly ain't enough. Yep. We tried that. It didn't work. So maybe we have to do a little more. Yep, it takes all kinds. And there's a time, there's a time for 
peace and there's a time for war. But during all this, Walter and I were still just trying to sort out what was going on. We decided pretty quickly that if we were going to make our way into the capital, we should not be disguised as Fox News. Many people had already made their opinions on Fox clear to us. And so we decided to masquerade as OAN again, which ended up being a good decision because people were happy to let us through. People were cheering for us. People were giving us their footage. <laughs> So what's going on at the Capitol right now? Uh, they're shooting Patriots with rubber bullets and flashbangs and tear gas. So you, you just got hit with a you just got hit with a rubber a, bullet. A flash grenade that was raining them down on the whole crowd. Every every time they you hear the boom up there, that's what they're doing. They're shooting us. I heard that people were storming the Capitol. They are. Look at the look at the steps. Everybody right now that you can see in the distance is now farther than where the cops wanted them to be. The reason for that is that we just put up fences or they just put up fences and they're now pouring over and pushing the cops back um, and I don't think many people know that right now so just FYI so they're pushing the cops back they're pushing the cops back uh, because they're outnumbered 100 to 1 or maybe more that's why we're gonna get a close look and we're gonna leave okay um, and so here we go thank you thank you thank you thank you too. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. The scene as we got closer and closer to the Capitol got more and more chaotic. It felt like something out of a scripted movie. They're not using rubber bullets right now. They were before. Right now, they're not using it. Excuse me. Coming through. People yelling and screaming about OAN. People singing patriotic songs and God bless America. A man in a tin foil hat came up to us and asked us if we wanted to talk about 5G. So, so I got a, I got a message about the 5G. It is remote influence yeah, us. I'm talking about what's going on right now. It wouldn't be until about an hour later when the adrenaline wore off that I would find myself hyperventilating and trying to catch my breath. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Thank you guys. Do you want to say anything? Anything? What's going to go? All I can say is that those, those a-holes in that building, they caused this. They betrayed us and they betrayed this country. They have no one to blame but themselves. And at this point, Pence is nothing but a traitor and he deserves to burn with the rest of them. Pence voted against Trump. Okay, and that's when all this started? Yep, that's when we marched on the Capitol. We've been shot at with rubber bullets, tear gas, concussion grenades, flashbang grenades. And as far as I'm concerned, I love the police, but they are defending the tyranny inside that building. And now they're just as complicit as those inside that voted against us. Even as the chaos unfolded in front of us, it was hard to get a true sense of the scale of this moment. We're trying to get, we're, we're trying to get closer. Go ahead, get closer. How do, we, how do we get closer? Just go follow the crowd. And what was especially striking is that even though we had seen police cars rushing towards the scene, there was not an officer to be found. We were in a sea of Trump supporters. Even as we kept hearing stories of violence ahead. It's wild up there. Wild. They've been spraying the entire town. America! Yeah. Yeah, occasionally, the tree of freedom must be watered with the blood of tyrants. And that's what we have running our government right now is a group of tyrants who steal elections on an industrial scale. Does anyone really believe that Joe Biden got more votes than Donald Trump? Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! This, this election was stolen, it's illegitimate, and our Congress has now made it official, or is about to make it official. There was an overwhelming sense of pride in the air. These people felt that if they couldn't have their way, they would burn the building down and give a huge middle finger to the establishment and everyone against them in the process. Oh my God. People bragging about the videos they'd shot. People laughing about breaking through the doors, trashing the U.S. Capitol, making these politicians know that they thought that they were scum. It was almost like a college football game if your college was populated by conspiracy theorists, vigilante paramilitaries, and a whole lot of people who hated the government. Oh. Have you been sprayed? No, I've not been sprayed. I just got here, but I want to show you something, okay? What's going on? I'm going to show you something here. This is breaking news. And then you see the window smash over here. They fired through. That, that was not a rubber bullet. That's a real bullet. And just like that, we knew we had to get out of there. 
I think I think it's time. I think it's time to go. we get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Let's get out. It's time to go. It is time to go. Even as we tried to get out of the Capitol as quickly as possible, people kept stopping us. Oh, please, let me give OA in a quote. Oh, please, listen to how I was cheated out of a congressional seat in Florida. Oh, please, take my footage of us committing federal crimes because we believe that you are the best people to handle the truth. What did you say? I think it was a good call and not pull out the other mics. Yeah, Jesus. I think that, I think that would have been the literal worst thing we could have done. So yeah, uh, it's it's getting bad and we, we're getting out of here. We were surrounded by people who wanted to just have a moment on camera to brag about what they were doing. Mission accomplished. About what the day had become. Thank you. Because Can we were the people they trusted with the truth. You're the own? Love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys, you guys like. We were, we were trying to get alive. some quotes of people that got shot up there, and we we're realizing it might be time to, to get I out of here. My footage. We're right by the front door the whole time. We're right yeah. You have footage? Yeah, yeah my phone's full. Pictures, and I've got first reports. Unfortunately, somebody trashed Nancy Pelosi's office. Walter and I decided to both go live as soon as we could get service because we figured it would be a better way to protect ourselves and make sure that we were documenting what happened. Thanks to our friend Maggie, Walter's live was recorded. What do you take off what? I'm gonna put on my other mask. I don't wanna wear this America mask anymore. Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm keeping this on until we're away from the, very, the crazy people. Very angry. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Oh my God. Look at this, look at this crew. Oh my god. Not, not, not the communist Comcast. <laughs> oh my god. And as a little cherry on top, as we were trying to rush our way out of the Capitol, someone got out of their car and almost tried to fight Walter because he believed him to be a Trump supporter. I'm gonna sit on the south. I'm gonna sit on the south. I don't give a fuck. I'm over south. Man, get the fuck away from my car. Uh, I'm not a Trump supporter. You want to get the fuck away from my car? I'm gonna fuck the fuck. And honestly, with everything that was going on in the Capitol, respect to that dude. I'm happy we didn't get beaten up, but we were garbed in the same attire as all these freedom-loving patriots who were committing an act of domestic terrorism. I can't blame him. Luckily, we got out of DC. We made our way back to our car, but both of us were really shaken. And I posted this video on TikTok because I was just trying to let people know I was okay. And that video kind of went viral. Anyone who is defending the f***ing MAGA protesters right now, uh, f*** you. Walter and I- We were just there. We watched Donald Trump give a speech. After the speech, they, everyone, thousands, marched to the Capitol building and stormed it. After he riled them up in his speech. Immediately after. We were there. We saw it. You want to debate us? We were there. We saw everything that happened. We have video. Okay, and the video that we don't have, the things we didn't see, was given to us by MAGA supporters that willingly gave us this video, boasted this. We, uh, we're, we're safe. We've been out of DC now for like 30 minutes. I'm still fucking shaking because like, oh my God. Um, we're okay. Uh, I will I will be posting other videos as we go, but thank you for people who are checking in. We are okay. God bless, be safe. And so began the long trip home. About an hour outside of DC, we stopped at a Wendy's to just slow down and calm down. We sat in the parking lot for about an hour and I found myself crying in a Wendy's bathroom, which, you know, <laughs> you know that, ma'am, this is a Wendy's meme? That was me. That was me in the middle of all of this, feeling like an idiot for putting myself in such a stupid situation. At this point, we're learning that there had been bombs at the scene, that the woman had died and many people had sustained injuries. What I've now learned is over 50 people have been arrested and over 50 officers were hurt at the scene. An officer has died, a woman died, and three other people died of medical injuries. The weight of this was just starting to hit us in this Wendy's parking lot. And I was freaking out. I'm not someone who cries very often, but I found myself breaking down in a Wendy's bathroom, which would have been embarrassing enough. Ma'am, this is a Wendy's. I could not stop thinking about that meme as I was literally crying, but it was only the beginning of me really starting to reckon with what had just happened and what it means to see that part of America up close, because I hadn't before. After about an hour in that Wendy's parking lot, 
Walter and I finally started again back on the road home. Okay, it is two in the morning. We've made it back to Brooklyn. Uh, we are at the, the budget car return stop. Um, after multiple stops and getting a little lost in New Jersey because the Holland Tunnel was closed. Dude, what happened today? It's, I it's, need time to like process what happened. There was a terror attack. The, one of the guy, one of like the chief like people that, that is like wanted everywhere, his face is everywhere. He's in like a TikTok of mine. And I, like, I've met him, I've interviewed him. I'm like, I'm not okay. Like, I'm. I know you're not okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm that's, not okay. That's kind of where we're at, 2 a.m. on the scene. Not, that was not okay. These people are not okay. This is terrorism. This is a cult. Like, we, we make comedy. We're actors. We were going there to, like, make a funny. We did not, like, want to be embroiled in the middle of, like, domestic terrorism. So, that's, that's where we're at right now. Alright, folks. It is... The end of the night. We are back in Brooklyn after a long ass trip home. We made a couple stops. We got lost in New Jersey because the Holland Tunnel was closed. And so we had to take a couple detours. I'm gonna look through all my footage tomorrow, but I have no idea how it looks. That is editing Peter's problem tomorrow. My elevator is out and I'm gonna go figure it out. So the most reliable part of my day every day is the six flight walk up. New York, baby. It does not matter how good of shape you are in. By the fifth floor, before you reach six, it'll get your breath going. <laughs> All right, I am back at home and it's so, so late and I'm not, I'm not gonna try and make words right now. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna edit the rest of this video tomorrow. And that was our day. Walter and I are lucky to be safe. We're lucky to be two white men who no one suspected and who could slip in and out. And I really still don't know what my takeaway is. The thing about these people is they have been fed so much misinformation. These are people who are telling me that Fox was liberal propaganda. I had someone say to me, you know it's a sad day when Alex Jones is the most trustworthy voice in the room. This is someone who recognized that Alex Jones is out of his mind, but still didn't believe he could trust anyone else to get real news from. The collective growth and financial incentives of misinformation online is toxic, and it is being pumped into the veins of the American people. I'm not gonna pretend like I have a solution for it, but I think it is one of the existential problems that our generation is gonna have to deal with. I know this video is really long. I don't know how many people actually made it to the end here, but it's not something that we can ignore. We can't just assume that because Trump is out in a week and a half that this is all gonna be over. 75 million people voted for that man and tens of thousands showed up for that rally. The hang the traitor calls, the excitement about revolution and civil war. We are a nation built on white supremacy and these calls to authoritarianism, to overturn elections, to literally designate Antifa, which just means anti-fascist as a terrorist organization, are all instances of that foundation rearing its ugly head. This is who we are, it's who we have been, and it's not going away. Those things can't just be swept under the rug. And so I'm sorry that this video was kind of a doubter. I did not mean for it to be this serious. I thought we were gonna be there shooting comedy videos all day, but it's a lot harder for me to laugh at everything now. It's way harder having seen it up close. So that's what this video is. If you made it this far, thank you. I have a feeling my next vlog is gonna be about nothing even close to political. It's gonna be about like my holidays at home and my friends because I just need to, to focus on something a little more positive. But I know that so much of my energy is going to have to go towards dealing with this or trying to deal with it. Hopefully we can do that together. I hope you don't look away. Send this video to people. Let people see what America really looks like because it's not pretty up close. Normally I end these videos saying wherever this video finds you, I hope it finds you happy healthy, okay, and I still hope for those things, I, I do. But so much of America has been ignoring this problem for so long and we have let it fester and we've let it grow. And we can't keep doing that. We have to address these people. We have to understand them and try and deal with the problems that are growing in our country and deal with the disillusionment of how our country operates and what reality we live in. If you're proud to be an American, 
show up.